Hey, good morning everyone. It's Glenn Kellaway coming to you from the basement. This is a video about Jack White. Let me tell you something. Yesterday morning, I was sitting here minding my own business. The phone rings and I look at the uh, ID thing and it's my daughter. I go, hmm, wonder what she wants in the middle of the morning when she's working. She says, do you want to go see Jack White tonight? And my daughter Stephanie's a huge Jack White fan. She goes to see him every time she's here. I think she's seen him like eight times or something. And uh, I went, yeah, I guess I do. I got a free ticket to see Jack White at the Budweiser stage in Toronto last night. Um, so I want to tell you a bit about the show. I'm rocking my new Jack White hat. I got my new Jack White t-shirt. Um, yeah, had a freaking great time. What a show. So uh, first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about my uh, knowledge and experience of Jack White, which is pretty limited compared to a good big fans. Um, I have a few uh, things. I have uh, a couple of white stripe CDs. Uh, this one is Get Behind Me Satan, and this one is Icky Thump, which is considered one of their best albums. And I also have this comp, uh, which is amazing. If you're just a casual fan, this is a great, great, greatest hits package. It's got everything you'd ever want on it. Fantastic double record. Um, can't recommend that one enough. Uh, I have some Jack White solo stuff. A couple actually. I got Boarding House Reach and I have the acoustic recordings. Another fantastic, fantastic set. This one's great. It's got all his songs on it, all done acoustically pretty much. And uh, you can buy this on vinyl as well, which I would love to pick up the vinyl on this. I originally bought the CD, so there you go. Um, I also have, he's touring uh, to promote his new albums. Uh, Jack put out two albums very quickly, uh, like a month ago one, and then another one right away. Uh, the first one that came out is called uh, Fear of the Dawn. Um, yeah, my case got cracked. Uh, this one, I heard it. I'm having a hard time with it. It's um, heavier and it's got a kind of a weird guitar sound and um, I don't know, I, I think after seeing the show last night I'm going to have a new appreciation for it so I don't want to say too much. This I haven't heard at all. I picked it up at the show last night but my daughter tells me it's outstanding um, so I'm dying to hear that. It is called Entering Heaven Alive. So that's his two new albums which he did last night. So the show started at 8 o'clock last night. Um, we were in the lawns, and the, the seats in the lawns were still 80 bucks, and the place was absolutely jam-packed. I'm sure there was, uh, I don't know what the, the Budweiser stage holds for capacity, but it was it was pretty much capacity crowd, and I would say 18,000, 17,000, somewhere around there, and just uh, having a ball. The show opened at 8 o'clock with... Uh, a band from Toronto called July Talk that I was not familiar with at all but when I was uh, we were driving down to the venue my son-in-law Ryan uh, said to me I don't like this band July Talk he says that the guy's voice he sounds like Cookie Monster it drives me nuts and I'm going <laughs> I think that's funny so they came on and I thought they sounded great they're a, they're an alt rock band from Toronto led by a uh, uh, man and woman duo. I'm not sure if they're a couple or not. Uh, they sure flirt a bit on stage, but uh, just a good alternative rock guitar. Uh, the songs were good. I, um, like I said, I'm not that familiar to talk about the song titles or anything they did. But then this morning, when I, I almost bought their CD, I liked them that much at the merch table. But um, uh, this morning, when I got up, I went on uh, YouTube and checked out a couple of their songs, and the guy does sound like Cookie Monster on record. I didn't, I didn't like the sound of his voice at all on the on the studio stuff, but he came across really good live. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. July Talk, check them out. They've been around like 10 years or something. Um, they came on at eight, played for 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, Jack White came on at 9:15. Uh, the stage was had a blue tint to it uh, with a blue curtain, a very kind of a sheer kind of a curtain. And then the band went on stage behind the curtain and a light shone on them and they, you just saw their shadowy silhouettes. And they started rocking out with this heavy rock and groove. And man, it sounded great. The sound, the sound system was fantastic. The sound was so good. 
Um, they did that and eventually the curtain lifted and Jack White is full of energy. I, uh, it, what a performer, man. I'm still, you know when you see those concerts where you can't sleep for two days and you're just like this? That's what it's like. I, I thought it was amazing. He, he, what a performer, what a guitar player. He's got a, a million, he's a riff machine and um, all his riffs are so kind of hypnotic or something. I don't know how to describe them. They're uh, just so good. Anyway, um, he started with two songs off the Fear of the Dawn album, actually the first two songs, the, the Taking Me Back and Fear of the Dawn, um, which I, I say, like, uh, I got to listen to this again because they sounded fantastic. And uh, then he got into an old White Stripes song called Dead Leaves in the Dirty Ground, which is one of my favorite White Stripes songs. Back to the new album for two more cuts, Heidi Ho and The White Raven. And then he did a Rack and Tours song. He did uh, You Don't Understand Me. That's one of Jack's other side projects, if you're not familiar. Um, then he went into the newest album, which is the Entering Heaven Alive album. And he did two songs called A Tip From You To Me and All Along The Way. Then we get some White Stripe classics. I am my arguably my favorite White Stripe song. So catchy, go to sing along, Hotel Yorba. It was great. Everybody was joining in. And uh, yeah, it's such a great, if you don't know that song, check it out, Ho Hotel Yorba. Um, he also did Canon, it's a White Stripe song. Then he did the title song from one of his albums, Lazaretto. Lazaretto. Um, he did a cover from a band called DOC. I'm not familiar with them. I'm sure if anybody's watching this who's a Jack White fan knows them. He did a song called It's Funky Enough. Um, then did another uh, White Stripe song called Fell in Love with a Girl, which is a pretty cool song. Um, that Black Licorice. Then he did a song by a band called Dead Weather, a cover called I Cut Like a Buffalo. Then he did a song by a Toronto band called Big Sugar, who were a great band, uh, Ride Like Hell. He covered one of the Toronto band songs. That was great. Um, ended the show with my probably my favorite uh, White Stripe song, Ball and Biscuit, which is just a heavy blues song. Think, think heavy Led Zeppelin off of uh, Physical Graffiti. It's just like, dang, 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 dang. it's just like, and it's really heavy and just cuts right through. And great lyrics. Um, I, I may be your third man, but I know I'm the seventh son. It's kind of that bluesy theme. And um, it went on for like 10 minutes of just scorching guitar. It was Frickin' awesome. The guy's an awesome guitar player. Um, Encore. He came out and he did a rack and tour song called Steady As She Goes. He did Icky Thump, the title song off one of their best albums. He did a song called What's the Trick? And then ended with, I think everyone who knows Jack White and the White Stripes would know this, Seven Nation Army, his kind of anthem, I guess. And um, fantastic show. So when you go into the venue, Jack does not allow you to have a phone. They make you line up, put your phone, I, I don't carry a phone with me, so I, it didn't bother me, but my, my daughter and her friend and my son-in-law were there, and they had to put their phone in this lock pouch. So they give you a pouch, they lock it, and they hand you the pouch, and you gotta walk around like that all night. And then when you're on your way out, you gotta find a guy to unlock the pouch. There's a few of them kind of wandering around, but man, does it slow getting out of there. So the concert ended at 11, p.m. maybe five after and by the time we got in the car and got out of the parking lot and got to a, an expressway to head home it must have been midnight so um, crazy uh, I didn't get home till 20 to 2 in the morning um, and we didn't stop for anything that was just driving back uh, an hour back to where my daughter and uh, Ryan live and uh, and then me driving back to Trenton Ontario but Man, I was wide awake the whole time, and I'm not a, a, a night owl at all. And I was just, I, I was playing White Stripes' Greatest Hits album full blast on the way home once I dropped everybody off. And uh, man, I just had a great time at this show. Fantastic. Uh, if you get a chance to go see Jack White on this tour and you like scorching guitars, you will not regret this for a minute. Great, great show. So thanks, everyone. Uh, peace out, everyone. Have a great weekend.